Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Frank. I'm the Medical Director for the Analytic Biochemistry Laboratory at AREP Laboratories in Salt Lake City. I'm Dr. Sarah Hackmuller. I'm a Clinical Chemistry Fellow at the University of Utah and AREP Laboratories. Today we'd like to discuss biochemical testing for pheochromocytoma. A new Endocrine Society Clinical Practice Guideline for pheochromocytoma and paraganglioma has been released. Pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas are rare tumors of neuroendocrine tissue specifically related to the adrenal gland. The tumors typically produce symptoms such as high blood pressure, pounding headaches, and heart palpitations because the tumors overproduce catecholamines, which include adrenaline. These guidelines include four recommendations for laboratory testing to aid in the diagnosis of these tumors. For many years, we've offered testing for the compounds produced by the tumors as a way of identifying the disease and we have a good idea of which analytes should be measured. But as you know, the correct tests aren't always ordered. This new guideline, published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism in June 2014, specifies very clear recommendations for testing that we'd like to highlight for our clients and ordering physicians. Let's look at the guidelines. The first guideline is, we recommend that initial biochemical testing for pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas should include measurement of plasma-free metanephrines or urinary fractionated metanephrines. The phrase, we recommend, is used to indicate that this is a strong recommendation and there is high quality evidence to support it. We support this recommendation, but what does it mean? Let's take a look at the analytes that are tested and the terminology used to describe these assays. Catecholamines collectively refer to the compounds epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Another name for epinephrine is adrenaline. Catecholamines are metabolized to other compounds such as metanephrine and normetanephrine. Metanephrine and normetanephrine are collectively referred to as metanephrines. Although testing for catecholamines and metanephrines is available, the guideline focuses on testing for metanephrines. The reason for this is that catecholamines are metabolized to metanephrines within pheochromocytoma tumor cells. This process occurs continuously and is independent of catecholamine release, which can occur intermittently or at low rates. For this reason, metanephrine concentrations provide a more sensitive indicator for the detection of pheochromocytoma. When measured in plasma, the most informative results are obtained by measuring the free compounds rather than the total amount of the compounds. We use the word free to refer to the compounds that have not been modified by additional metabolism. Urine assays typically include sample preparation that allows the total compounds to be measured. This means both the free and modified compounds are measured and a total amount is reported. For urine, the results are more valuable if the individual compounds, such as metanephrine and normetanephrine, are identified and measured individually. And this can be achieved by using chromatographic techniques to separate the compounds from each other. The separation of the individual compounds is referred to as fractionation. The distinction is specified because some older assays measured all of the compounds together, and it's possible that the sum of the compounds when measured together would appear to be a normal value when one of the compounds was actually abnormally elevated. In most plasma assays, the compounds are separated and measured individually as well. The second recommendation provides guidance for the laboratory test methods. This recommendation is, we suggest using liquid chromatography with mass spectrometric or electrochemical detection methods rather than other laboratory methods to establish a biochemical diagnosis. The phrase we suggest is used to indicate that this is a weak recommendation and the evidence used to support it is of low quality. The suggestion is to use a chromatographic technique to separate the individual compounds. And as we said earlier, this is an improvement over older techniques that do not measure the individual compounds. Liquid chromatography coupled to mass spectrometry or electrochemical detection systems are sensitive and specific techniques available in many laboratories. Although testing by immunoassay is available, it is considered to be less valuable as a tool for biochemical evaluation of pheochromocytoma. The third recommendation describes specimen collection requirements. For measurements of plasma metanephrines, we suggest drawing blood with the patient in the supine position and use of reference intervals established in the same position. This recommendation is also a suggestion based on weak evidence. Posture at the time of collection does affect measured concentrations of metanephrines, and metanephrine concentrations measured in specimens collected from patients sitting upright 
are higher than concentrations in samples collected from patients lying supine after a period of rest. However, most phlebotomy centers don't have a separate room where a patient can rest supine and phlebotomy is routinely performed while the patient is in a seated position. The consequence is an increased likelihood for false positive results. This brings us to consideration of the final recommendation for biochemical testing. The last recommendation is we recommend that all patients with positive test results should receive appropriate follow-up according to the extent of increased values and clinical presentation. This is a strong recommendation, however, the evidence supporting it is of low quality. Let's take a look at the meaning of extent of increased values and how that relates to the evaluation of results. In the usual binary approach to interpretation of quantitative test results, the established upper reference limit on this slide showing norepinephrine results, 0.61 nanomoles per liter, is used to determine whether the concentration of norepinephrine is normal or elevated, that is, whether the result is negative or positive. For evaluation of pheochromocytoma, a continuous approach for interpretation of test results is useful. That is, as the magnitude of the result increases, the probability of the result indicating the presence of a tumor also increases. In this slide, metanephrine and normetanephrine results from studies of patients with tumors and those who did not have a tumor are plotted. Results within the reference interval are shown in the lower left corner of the graph, and positive results are shown above the dotted lines. The gray dots indicate the results for patients who did not have tumors. The black outlined squares show results for patients with pheochromocytoma. The equivocal zone, shown by gray shading on the slide, consists of results that are slightly elevated above the upper reference limit. These are the results that require additional follow-up evaluation to rule out false positives. False positive results may arise due to specimen collection conditions such as seated versus supine collection posture or certain medications that interfere with accurate measurement of metanephrines. We've summarized the new Endocrine Society clinical practice guidelines as they relate to biochemical testing for evaluation of pheochromocytoma. The guidelines do include additional recommendations related to imaging studies, genetic testing, and patient management. For that information, here is the complete citation for the published guideline.